Ain't nothing like looking at a casket and seeing your best friend in it. Selling drugs, gun charge. I was in this game, but also seeing yourself. I was looking at 10 to 15 years in prison. I was able to filter out a lot of the negative things. Ron is interested in basketball. This guy will most likely go pro. We understood what his background was. People from all walks of life can be inspired by some component of my journey. My grandmother and my great uncle come from Columbus, Mississippi. They came from the South in the, in the 50s, late 50s, early 60s, and we winded up in Wisconsin. My grandmother was the matriarch and the patriarch of the family. You know, I had an amazing queen and, and my grandmother that raised me without a male figure or presence. The 10 hours a day, coming home, taking care of the kids, and Maddie was young. Everybody was young. I was 14 and living at home with my mom. I had Karan. She just said she was gonna be there and help me raise him. Don't worry. What I've taken from her is that don't ever be content and that, you know, you have to put, you know, a lot into your craft. I used to always play basketball. I loved the game. Playing with wire hangers, putting them in the doorway, rolling up a sock shooting, like that was my thing. We grew up racing Wisconsin. Everywhere you go is a park. We had the big lights over the hoops where you can hoop all night. That was me, like five, six years old. I was going to the parks with my Uncle Carlos. He loved his uncle and they were close. They were only a few years apart, but that did affect him in a bad way. Racine was an extremely rough area. Homicide rate was through the roof. The drug war was going on where two factions were fighting for territory. We had kids as young as 12 and 13 that were slinging rocks on the corner. We saw drug dealing, we saw hustling, we saw you know junkies and that lifestyle. You're trying to survive, you're just trying to make it to the next day, the next hour, the next minute. My uncle Carlos is probably one of the most talented players in, you know, the state of Wisconsin, in the history of the state. But, you know, he came product of the lifestyle, you know, selling drugs, gun charge. His career was taken away from him. Of course, his nephew was watching him. And before I know anything, Karan got caught up too. He started hanging out in the alleys, and he was doing stuff he shouldn't have been doing. This is the house that I grew up in here on the south side of Racine. Um, you hear the stories of me hopping out the windows. That specific window right there was the window that I used to always hop out, head up the block. Right now, we in South Park, 18th Street Mall, AKA my block. And this is where we used to just hang out and stand like statues every day. The hot spot was uh, 18th Street Mall as far as where all the dope dealing took place for Southside. I mean, that was Karan's stomping grounds. Whatever I had on me, I could sell. You know, making two, three, four hundred or making two, three, four thousand. Like, it didn't matter. Like, if I had it, I could sell it in a matter of two, three hours. That's the traffic that you had out here. It would be like a fast food restaurant just one car after another coming through. Every day, man, we'd be out here just posted. So much was going on down there. Every now and then, a kid got shot. People that I knew, kids' sons were murdered. Oh, it was terrible. It was a strong possibility of me being a father I felt like I needed to put money together and I knew that wasn't gonna happen at an ordinary job. I needed a lot of money, I need a lot of money fast. Oh, I gotta go harder, I gotta hustle harder. I gotta, I gotta get a meal ticket, like to, to help my daughter, to take care of my daughter. Took unnecessary risks with my life and that's what led to me being incarcerated. They arrested him and took him to Julie. 
I did not know what to do. Me and Maddie, we couldn't afford a lawyer. They sent my grandson away. I felt enough hurt, like in my heart. I felt like a failure to the two most important people in my life, my grandmother and my mother. Just me being in that cell, and then when I saw the pain in their eyes, the disappointment, my vow to myself was, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to do right by them. He told me, Mom, I will never get locked up again. I am never going to jail again. And I said, I believe it, son. I'm not afraid to tell you, I, was, I, I feared a lot of things, too, because the dudes that I hung around with was dying. You know, and that shit scared me. Ain't nothing like going and looking at a casket and, and, and seeing your best friend in it, but also, like, seeing yourself. It got me to the point where I was just like, you know what, I gotta get a job or something. I'm taking the orders and drive through, like, welcome to Burger King, may I help you? He just stayed out of trouble and stayed away from the people that was trying to put him back in prison. They make fun of me and just be like, man, you gonna, you gonna go through all this and you could have made, you could have made a G just like that. You know, I was able to filter out a lot of the negative things that I had going on in my life and able to get on the straight and narrow. After he got out, he got really serious in basketball. I was already thinking like, this is my one opportunity. I've been trying to really dive in and focus on basketball. He would make a lot of points, 30 points, 40 points. They were telling me, oh, he will be going to the NBA. he stay at this rate. I felt good. Karan is interested in basketball. I could see it in him. He's not going to get in trouble no more. January 22nd, 1998 was the first time I ever met Cram Butler. I did uh, eight and a half years on third shift. From there, I ended up being promoted to detective and went right into the drug unit. I had drafted a warrant for the house on Bluff Avenue, Karan's residence. This was based on a buy that I did where we bought dope out of the garage from an individual. We hit the house on January 22nd, 1998. Karan is the only one there. We end up finding 15.3 grams of crack cocaine. The threshold was 15 grams and he's looking at 10 to 15 years in prison. I was so sad because I said, here we go again. They're going to send him away. And he had his hand behind his head. Just grandma, they're going to send me away. It ain't none of mine. I had a cast on my left hand, and they handcuffed me like through, my, through the hole of my cast. And he was like, uh, I, you know, I haven't seen you out here in these streets. I sit down with him and I see tears well up in his eyes like he couldn't believe this was happening. And I was like, you know, I ain't, I, I'm clean, bro. Like, I, I ain't been out here since I got, you know, released. And I said, no, my son works all the time. He don't have any drugs or money. I also noticed that he's got burns all over his hands. And I said to him, where did you get burns on your hands? From the fryer at Burger King. I don't recall ever coming into contact with a drug dealer that was also working at Burger King. Rick Geller, he came to me and he had a conversation with me. He made me feel at ease when I was like really tense. He just made sure that Karan did not get mistreated in that situation. So I ended up having a conversation with my supervisor who said, look, you got 15.3 grams, you got enough, charge this kid. And I felt bad enough about it that I ended up kind of going over his head and I went to my lieutenant and I said, look, LT, I don't think this kid knew that this dope was in this house and I think it would be a tragedy if we charge him. Luckily, I had built up a decent enough reputation in the drug unit where the lieutenant said, you know what, if you don't feel right about it, then we're not going to do it. Then you let this kid walk. And that's what I did. 
I could have been recycled and caught up in the system, but that wasn't the case. So I'm forever grateful to uh, Rick Geller for that. He see no color, he just see the truth. I mean, I was honest with him. I told him if I'm wrong about this and you are selling dope, you and I will meet again. And his response was, you and I will never meet again. I promise you that. One of the other gang investigators said to me, you have no idea how good this guy is at basketball, do you? And I said, no, why should I? He said, this guy will most likely go pro. The Miami Heat select Ron Butler. He understood all of the things that he went through as a young man. Ron Butler was certainly on top of our list. Y'all in my pad right now. There's Butler, he scores! To be traded, it was just a blow. I just broke down and cried. It's nice to know that, you know, if you really do the work, there's nothing you can't accomplish.